For the past 50 years, there have been multiple reports of cancer. Cancer. Overall rise in cancer. At an earlier age. And it's likely due to risk factors that people were exposed to at a young age. As you probably already know, cancer is something that for the last few decades has been a growing problem now more so than it ever has before. Right now, where it stands for the top causes of death, cancer is only in second place right behind heart disease. But this is what got me. The World Health Organization is now stating that they expect to see a 77% increase over the next 20 years. That means 35 million people will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. We certainly have more and more people walking in through our doors every year. And the numbers are expected to continue rising. The WHO is predicting 35 million new cancer cases will be detected in the year 2050. So I know you may be thinking that you're probably going to be the lucky one that dodges that bullet, but here's a quick stat. In the United States, they're projecting one in two males and one in every woman will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. So at some point, cancer will touch you and I or somebody close to us if it hasn't already. But you know, scientists have been working really hard on finding a cure and finding solutions that can fix cancer. Sometimes. Months later, I noticed a rather large lump on my forehead. And this all led us to ultrasounds and testing that later diagnosed me with stage 4 metastatic breast cancer. Um, We currently take the cut, poison, burn, or melt approach. If the cancer has not progressed to begin entering other parts of the body, we start by cutting it out. And if that's not enough, we go to chemotherapy and radiation, which is how we attempt to poison and burn the cancer, but still killing all of the good cells surrounding the location. That's why they refer to this as the poison approach. And if that doesn't work, there are new immunotherapy options to try and train your immune system. But I don't know about you, but all of these options sound really scary, especially when they don't always work. Right now, the survival rate of cancer is listed at anywhere between 70% live past five years after their diagnosis and only 19% live past 20 years. And all of this is linking to how early they were diagnosed in the progression of their cancer and what kind of cancer you were diagnosed with. So there's no denying that early detection is crucial in beating cancer, but what if there is a way to prevent cancer from the start? And of course, you got to... Ooh! Yeah, that's different. It's good though. This is the question I asked Google after seeing the newest press release about a vaccine that has been designed to train your immune system to attack cancer. So I'm a beekeeper and lately I've been doing a lot of research into the history of beekeeping and what beekeeping has even meant to us as a civilization over the last couple millennia. And what keeps recurring over and over again in my findings is that for some reason beekeepers tend to live longer than the normal population. And that led me to a study that was published just 10 years ago investigating the mechanisms of honey and how it could possibly be anti-cancerous. So cancer is really tricky in that usually the immune system can catch any sort of abnormal cells or cancerous cells and immediately get rid of them. But what makes cancer so deadly is it has a way of disguising itself so that your immune system can never find it. One is that it has a uncontrolled cellular proliferation. That sounds like a mouthful, but pretty much what it means is that it's able to keep making new cells at a crazy rate. And two, it has inadequate apoptotic turnover, aka cell death. 
So to try to explain this in the simplest of terms, what would normally happen when something in your body was out of whack is your body would send enzymes and proteins that would alert your immune system that, hey, there is something here that is an invader. It's not supposed to be here. And it would signal your immune system to then attack it and destroy that cell. But how cancer is so freaking tricky is that it's able to bind to those exact proteins so that it pretty much covers up any of the evidence that it's even there to begin with. Now, the question is, what does this even have to do with honey? And that is where this gets really interesting. So in the study, it doesn't say specifically how honey is able to do it. I don't know if it's the polyphenols that are in honey or the, well, which are pretty much antioxidants as well. But through honey, it's able to keep those, those proteins from being bound up so that the immune system can actually see that the cancer is there. It has a way of almost like supporting your immune system because not only can it help uncover cancer, but it's also able to keep cancer from mutating some of your genes, um, especially something called P53. The P53 gene is responsible for sending out those proteins in particular to find cancer. So if that gene isn't sending out instructions properly to your body, then your body's never going to be able to find cancer. And that is exactly what honey prevents from happening. It keeps that P53 gene working and active. So the moment that a problem cell pops up, your body's able to get rid of it and keep it from becoming something like a tumor or just keep it from replicating. Now, another reason why this is especially important today is if you were to Google what causes cancer, Google says that it's a combination of, yes, your genetic factors, but it's also the external things that you're coming in contact with that are causing stress on your body. Some of those things could be carcinogens that damage the DNA or alter how your cells grow and divide. And these carcinogens can be found in our air, in our food, even in the water that we drink. And it can even be caused by not having enough of a vitamin that your body needs in order to keep reproducing cells. Now this is just brushing the surface, but the reason why this made me so excited is because from what it looks like, honey is kind of like putting on your armor to help protect your body and keep your immune system working well so that it's able to combat these things that you are coming in contact with. But there is one problem. When you go to the grocery store, 90% of the honey that you even see on the shelves isn't actually real anymore. And a lot of this is because in the United States, most of the honey that you do see in the supermarket are from other countries. And these other countries mix their honey with corn syrup so that they can sell it to us at a cheaper price so that honey packaging facilities are forced to outsource their product just so they can improve their bottom line. Luckily, I have seen more light being shed on this topic topic as I've been seeing many studies being done involving using spectrometer spectrometry I cannot pronounce that word but it's a big word so that they can actually see what honey that is on the on the shelves actually contains what it says to contain but unfortunately this is how we know that 90% of the honey that is sold in grocery stores is no longer real. So how are we supposed to get these health benefits if access to honey is so limited now? In 2020, there was a beekeeping boom and it is still currently taking place today, especially with the direction that our world has been taking in that many people are wanting to be able to be sustainable and provide all of the food they see on their plates for themselves. I would love to see a website or even a honey packaging company that was completely dedicated to only using American honey and where to find it. But until then, beekeepers like me are out there and we are actually kind of easy to find, especially with social media that we have today. You can just post a simple Facebook post and I guarantee you'll probably have somebody on there saying that they do have bees or even have honey. So access to honey's restorative effects is still there, but right now awareness of the problem is still our biggest issue. So if you want to learn more about how you can help check out this video that will explain everything you need to know about what is happening and what you can do about it.